Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the PCS. We round into game number three of the night out of five, by the way. My name is Sterex, and I am joined by the one and only Nightstar. Before we get into this one, CDBC Bank and Calibre are our proud sponsors. And remember, thank Right Games. Carry Live Co. and Garena for the league operation and this full operation of the English production. And as we run into this one, all I have to say, Nightstar, is this is one of my favorite games of the night. DCG versus J-Team. We have two titans in the PCS at the moment. Two people that are sitting just under PCG, PS, uh, PSG talent, excuse me, tied second in the league. Yeah, and both of these teams are vying for that second buy slot here. That's it. Uh, basically, if you win out, you're able to uh, just lock it in yourself, as uh, there will be really no one else to contest you. But uh, if you go one and one, it does leave the door open for a tiebreak scenario as we have J-Team up on our screen first. Driver coming on Uniboy, Lil Vienzo. I would say Uniboy is going to be the highlight here against Nest T because of the fact that, well, Uniboy, yes, he's been given some softer matchups, but he's brought a lot more diversity in his champion pool, uh, yep. maybe because of the matchups, but at the very least showcasing that he has them in his champion pool. I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is that Uniboy is a player I've tracked a lot. Uh, I've cast a lot of Uniboy through his small amount of time in the LPL. <laughs> and last year when he was there, uh, Uniboy was one of the weakest mid laners in the league. And as mm -hmm. he came back on J-Team into the PCS, the start of the split was a little bit slow, but he's really ramped up into a, a, you know, a great mid laner once again, and one of the top tiers in the league i'm glad you want to focus on him because on the other side when they're going up against deep cross gaming when we know that deep cross rely on nesty it's such an easy mid for mid matchup because mm -hmm. i feel like dcg uh their mid laner as well despite changing from his smite antics is still a, a decently strong laner too yeah for nesty it's less so about the lane phase itself and more about getting out of the lane and just attacking the side lanes as aggressively as possible. Uh, but we've seen in recent games that DCG are really struggling when it comes to uh, Nesty put on a non sort of primary engaged champion where he's not on a champ that can just make the first move and start out the fights for them and when it's come to uh, relying on woody or hana to be the primary engage they've fallen a little bit flat i mean that's why his champion pool so weird right to correct myself before you're right it's about how he moves uh the bards before we got the patch coming through with the smite but still things like rise just to fade a vega as well probably the most lane focus zillion Galio Ivan mid, which he's obviously taken one out of the fudge factor, and we have Seraphine as well. So Nesty is just a strange player. But even more so, I think DCG, this split, their story has been about how strange they're drafting. You look mm -hmm. at their drafts, and especially their last one, we had a Rumble top, Seraphine with a Hecarim, and it was like, hey, this cop wants to go fast. Let's see what they can do with it. Yeah. Uh Yesterday against Frank Esports, they had a very strong mid-game composition, but they really fell flat during the mid-game again. Like, you're with the Seraphine, you're very reliant on your front line to start the fights and being able to then follow up and coordinate with them to generate those longer range ultimates. And they just wasn't able to coordinate well enough with Woody and with Hana. As we get to see the comparison, it will be Kongri against Hana. Also, you know, part of that mid-jungle duo for J-Team, it's been a lot more explosive, 
for DCG. It's been more about impacting, again, these side lanes. Try and uh, generate four-man uh, bot lane dives or three-man plays up topside to invest gold into their young players of Leaky and Chris Gata. Yeah, I mean, they've been great, right? Chris Carter especially, uh, a player that's coming through with his debut and was meant to be the weak link, but I think Deep Cross Gaming has started relying on this AD and he's getting better and better. I've been saying that about a lot of players here today, but I feel like it's really true with Chris Carter. As we jump into pick and ban, uh, J-Team on blue, DCG on red, and these are the teams fighting for that spot underneath PSG Talon. I mean, hell, at this point, even fighting to tie first place, PSG Talon still have a couple of games to go as well. This matchup will push them up there and kind of tell us who could potentially be sharing a spot with with the bird in the sky. Now, Nightstar, what do you want to look here? Because you're so focused on mid. I know we just <laughs> talked about a little bit about jungle, but it does feel like already uh, we've got some focus, especially on Beauty Boy with the Zoe back. Yeah, uh, the Zoe band off is pretty much a uh, must ban against J Team now, and it will be DCG removing away the Tom Kench, which leaves the Jinx still left available for first pick. You could also look at the Zeri. Um, however, Lilvi, not really one of those players that uh, really capitalizes off of large gold investment into him as much. He kind of plays it uh, more of a safe lane, but will be that locked in is DCG. Uh, you could lock in the Jinx if you wanted on this rotation, but you don't need to. You could save it for third pick. Yep. And the Galio left available makes a lot of sense here. Again, we talked about Deep Cross Gaming, their mid laner wanting to play outside the lane. Galio does that well, and today has just been huge. So we get another Galio for Nesty, but it's about how DCG diversify their comp. Uh, you already mentioned something like the Jinx that could be picked up, but I'm more curious about priority jungle here for Hana. DCG say, hell about it. We'll find out what we're versing first. Yeah, and I think it's because they're really comfortable with both the Hecarim and uh, the J4 to combine with uh, the Galio here, because if you throw in uh, the J4, you're going to be able to um, really just try and lock down the Zeri as much as possible. You can also go for a Volibear if you want to try and dive, but uh, J Team, they recognize that there could be a lot of dive attempts happening onto his area. That's really been yep. how teams deal with this champion. And Alistar is a great counter dive tool. Nice. But, uh, you know, Ari as well, I could say the same thing. So third game here for Uniboy to pick up the champion. They actually forego jungle. And that's something we've seen today too. That's something I've been noticing in 12.4 and 12.5. Teams are starting to forego jungle a little bit more. Leave it to the wayside for some of these strong mid lane picks. And I like that when we heavily talked about Uniboy being a core carry on this composition, they put his Ari front row and center. Yeah, for DCG, they will go ahead, lock in the Hecarim. I fully expect a J4 to come off the table from the side of DCG, just because against a Jinx, uh, the Jarvan can get a whole lot of value, especially if you combine it with something like a Camille in this case, although J Team might also want to remove that off the table themselves. And it will be first the Viego, of course, calling it a very prominent Viego player. And that's one of his yep. core carries. And J Team, they will be the ones to take off the Camille. Okay, so with that jungle Jarvan you talked about, that's an option to take away as well. Xin Zhao there too. Uh, strong 2v2 to pair up with Uniboy because Kong Yue and Uniboy, they're that duo that we always talk about. That in the past, we always talk about that mad duo that right. I've been pretty excited to see and cast on. The okay. Volley Bear would have worked nicely, so volley that's bear. a pretty mm -hmm. smart ban here from DCG. Yeah, the Volley Bear also uh, gives them dive possibilities, right? With the Alistar, uh, they could force dives onto the Jinx, which also has a lot of value. And J Team, they will remove the Nautilus. So for DCG, you could go for something like a Braum, um, or if you want to try and amplify the dives, you could go for something like a Leona. But instead, they're actually going to hold their support pick for last, which signals to me it could possibly be a support Galio that they're looking at. But at the same time, what would be the mid pick is 
really the interesting part. Maybe they go back towards the Ivern uh, just to add a supportive element to protect this Jinx pick. And for J-Team, they're adding a little bit more range. Hovering currently the Jace, which you mentioned uh, has been the answer in LPL against the Naren. Now to find out what this jungler pick will be. Uh, Diana is still left available, interestingly enough, which has been one of the picks he's really loved to go back to for just pure, uh, pure carry purposes. But I feel like they have a lot of damage already, which is why he's looking at the J4. I mean, this is what you talked about before. So the Jarvan locked in, nice little uh, pick up there, Nightstar. I think importantly enough, PCS top laners aren't willing to play the Jace. And it's a fun point to mention that Driver, this is now his most played champion. He's been a top laner that I've really loved watching this split outside of the rest, outside of, you know, Hanabi as well. Uh, with Driver getting something comfortable, now it's down to the support for DCG. You wanted to find out where everything's going. You mentioned something like the Galio is a potential flex, but Renata, mm. okay, it's left open. Mm. There is a lot of piling, a lot that they can do if that fear and that ulti comes through at the same time. I'm not super sure about this Renata pick because of the fact that there is a lot of range coming in from J-Team. Yes, in certain all-in situations, uh, it's possible if Driver goes into hammer form that you could capitalize and get a massive ultimate with uh, the takeover. But I feel like this is purely just trying to capitalize on the lane phase against an Alistar, right? Where Ali uh, level one, you can get a lot of lane presence uh, against an Alistar level one because he's not a champion. Uh, so I'm looking for the side of DCG to play super aggressively, level one, and perhaps being able to snowball off of that. But all in all, like J-Team, they've given themselves a great opportunity to get yet another win against DCG. This would be massive uh, as DCG trying to slow down uh, their, their slippage here because they, they started out really well had a hiccup against cfo i mean cfo really strong mechanically but since then after climbing all the way up now starting to slide yeah it's it's exciting though right both teams are 12 and 4 and at the very start of the split j team versus dcg ended up in a dcg win they were the most surprising team with the way they drafted and now they sit in the upper echelon alongside j team where neck and neck these teams are currently tied but j team are the ones on a win streak deep cross gaming you're right, a little bit shaky coming through with a loss from frank esports one from psg talon and recently as well psg smacked them a couple of times for j team this would be everything for dcg the same story goes welcome to summoners rift and welcome to a game that is going to be very interesting to watch out because we do have the range you talked about from J Team, especially from Driver on this chase, Uniboy on the Ari. Lane matchups at Kongue can really influence. Yeah, a lot of shoving lanes here for the side of J Team. So uh, it's going to be kind of just a, a lot of possibilities offered to Kongue as far as where he could gank or at the very least just try and pressure this Hecarim in his jungle yep and for Nesty like he he gets his Galio he goes Predator uh again we uh PCS really liking this Predator Galio just to have early impact on the map and also be able to play around the jungler and it's going to be about the the speed here because you've got Predator and you've got Ghost on your jungler I mean you're not the only ones uh Predator Galio and LPL every single game pretty much so yeah, it's about influence. I love that you brought that up because it is a boot start from Nesty. Now, a lot of the time we see a pretty standard start from the Galio mids, but boot start is not always taken. So I'm kind of more interested to see what he can do in the first couple of levels. I've seen some crazy level threes from Galio as well. I mean, look at this. Just goes and smacks Shooty Boy down for a quick trade. Remembering that Predator isn't the longest cooldown in the world. So a uh, nice little opening here. But uh, Nest, uh, I want to ask you, Knight, start a little bit about jungle mm -hmm. pathing here. When we know how strong the lanes look from J-Team, what Hana can do in the early impact of this game? 
Yeah, for Hana, he really just wants to... Okay, I, I think we're going to have to put that on the back burner real quick. Yeah, because Kong Yuan wants a level 2 Jarvan gank as easy as they come. Pop not taken, the knock up there into the wall. Oh. He gets sent back by Driver. It's a flash burn. Is he about to go Mega Nah? Driver won't let him. Kong Yuan with the big brain for first blood. I mean, it's such a great knock up coming in from a Driver to boot him back. Leaky... Unfortunately, also burns the flash. That's going to be a clear target of interest for J Team coming up in these next five minutes. And uh, when you were talking about uh, pathing, I think for J Team, we figured out where they're going to be pathing because yeah. we have that missing flash. But for the side of uh, DCG, we'll see the replay here. Uh, Driver places himself <laughs> behind Leaky, so he tries to get the hop, but it's not good enough because Driver just positioned so perfectly well in that instance, and now he's going to have a big advantage, but going back to what Hana wants to do, he wants to make sure this Renata is able to get off the ground, is able to scale up here, so he's going to be trying to uh, focus around bot side as much as possible. And for now, the wave pushing in, so Hana just still going about his clear. A driver clearing away a ward, but they still don't know Hunter's up here. Uh, I want to come back as well to what that first blood meant because we already talked about Driver in this lane having a good time. That first blood, that damage output that he will be given when he makes his back will be a big deal as Driver with the knockback again. No mana. But Leaky has the slow That's down. Slow. You pull out the mana and Hunter's on the way through to run him down. Driver into the turret. But it is the Ghost versus the Flash as Driver will be sent packing. Yeah, and because of what happened earlier on in that lane, that's why Hana is also turning his attention up topside before things get any worse for his Gnar. Uh, Gnar, of course, one of those champions that, while people play him a lot for his weak side capabilities, you really need to make sure his lane phase goes all right. And at the very least, Hana uh, trying to mend that before it, it goes any worse and gets out of control. So, with the response there, we'll see if he pays an appearance to the top side once again, because there's no summoners whatsoever on Driver or Leaky. Uh, but Lethality was picked up in Driver's back there as he's forced to go back. Mm -hmm. And now has the Serrated Dirk, the tear up as well. Driver in a great position, and you can see Leaky. already the trading hurts. Yeah, and Leaky has pretty much no items. As Chris. he died early on, so he teleported back into lane and only got a refillable. Uh, so he's at a massive item deficit, and he if he takes another death before uh -oh. level 6 hits, that could just be lane over. Yeah, what were you saying? Because this is a good time to mention that before level 6, Kong Yue, on the outskirts of Vision, is in the right place at the right time. Mega Nah will be going down. This wave Kong is pushing waiting towards for him. it to expire, at least getting towards the end. The crunch being used, but Kong Yue still in a good oh, sidestep from Leaky. No, Leaky stepped forward. It was a nice little sidestep, and Kong Yue won't be able to get the kill. Oh, the side of J Team they just got way too impatient on that play. You already know the wave's starting to push towards you. You don't have to force that uh, play right then and there. You could have waited for that wave to come out and force him in a trickier position, but they end up overplaying the hand and Leaky able to get out of that is like, he's still in a bad spot, right? Because Driver oh, yeah. is still up a lot of CS, gets himself that tower play, but at the very least, you don't lose more uh, by dying in that situation. No, you don't. Good little stop at the back here from Leaky as well. But he had to walk the lane, missed a couple of minions at the turret. Turret plating went over to Driver 2. So at the very least, we're going to see what this Jace turns that item into. Uh, it won't be Eclipse this early on, but the component's there. And the Vampire Acceptor comes through nice and early. So again, the lane continues to be nice here for J-Team's top laner Driver. And as we look across the board, we could say the same about mid-2. Uniboy having a good time against Nesty, now that they've hit level 6 as well. Mm -hmm. So now things will kind of get evened up as far as pressure goes, right? Because uh, you are able to uh, turn your attention towards bot lane with either Hana or Nesty. So whichever uh, way. So options now open up a little bit more for Hana on this Hecarim. 
Uh, he doesn't have to babysit Leaky, but it does mean that Nesty will have to really cover whichever lane that Hana is turning in with attention towards. And he will have level 6 now as well, so be it becomes easy to make that play work. Onslaught of Shadows, Hero's Entrance, even if it comes towards bot, which you were talking about being a focus for DCG, Woody's ultimate, that, that massive hostile takeover, it all layers down with what DCG have to offer with their other ultimates mm -hmm. too. So I'm kind of excited to see them pile up and pull off, I guess, the execution here when we have a dragon available, when we have a herald soon too, both up and available for a, a response opportunity for DCG. Now Hana's up in the top side. The wave is coming towards him. Okay, Leaky with the ultimate, but a good knockback here from Driver. The flash crunch immediately oh, on top. Okay. Leaky, that was sick. And Hana is the cleanup crew in the rest of the play. I thought maybe it was once more just uh, an opportunity perhaps rushed a little bit too hard, but Woody possibly going to get picked off. Yeah, Uniboy is trying to bait this one out. Woody walking in would be certain death with the charm, but Uniboy now on top of a ward. DCG still here. Look at the numbers advantage. Spirit Rush will have to be used, but Ooh, taunted the top instead. Lens. That's so greedy. Uniboy late to pull the trigger, and he pays for it with his life. Kongyue here oh. as well. Wait, J what? Team, what are you doing? Cataclysm. He gets the steal, but hostile takeover for the zone. DCG not going to start the oh, fight. I take it back. Kongyue with a huge brain. And Driver helps Lil B get the kill. Now with the ulti out and the Super Mega Death Rock at his response. J Team heading forward. Woody the next target. It's a double kill. Kongyue thinking into the future with that follow up play. Kongyue is just ahead of the play. And now also level 6 onto the Alistar. They cannot walk up to defend this tower. This tower will go down with that extra herald. And J Team, they just managed to pretty much blow this game wide open. First side of DCG, like, we're gonna see the replay, but wow. Uh, Kongyue just big brain that all the way. I mean, it, it looked impossible. He's in front of four people. The ult, the stealing of Rift Herald, and suddenly DCG are down 2,000 gold. After what was such a brilliant topside gank from Leaky and Hana, uh, I just can't believe that DCG lost control after this replay we're about to see here. Yeah, Yee Boy, he gets picked off. They use uh, the Predator. That's uh, so greedy. Uh, I mean, that's just the strength of Predator Galio right there. But they know that bot lane is making their roam, and you have the extra. AD carry advantage along with a uh, Jace that just bought items. So they dodge out on the hostile takeover, and this is why I wasn't too keen on it. But now the turn comes because they have Driver here now, and fresh off the of back, he's got a lot more damage than anyone else on DCG. He does. Uh, and clean up here from Lil V, a good news story as well after the play. We, we come back to a J team that are now in control. They've lost the first dragon, but it doesn't matter. This is Zeri down here with two kills to an aim. And a Trinity Force well and truly on the way. Lil V mm -hmm. in a great position. Uniboy the same even after dying. And Driver still having control within the lane. So at this point, DCG kind of be looking for this next objective. And, and, you know, coming back to what we've been talking about, the setup here for these ulties. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see if DCG can pull it out again. Enzo has the ultimate, so uh, that's what he was looking for, to try and look for a dive attempt in that point in time. But Nesty doesn't have the ultimate himself, yep. so he can't answer with his own. And Yeah, coming into the mid game, J-Team with a big advantage right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Once these mythics come online, it's a massive power spike, right? Eclipse, the extra lethality, the Triforce is... Uh, the biggest one item power spike you could possibly get in bottom lane. Um, and Crescata, like, he's nowhere close to his own mythic here. So a large AD carry gap at the moment for this next fight, which uh, might happen around the dragon that's coming up in three minutes. Yeah, Cloud Dragon second. A lot of, t a lot of competitive teams will fight over this, considering that they know the Dragon Soul is going to be something very valuable this game. Uh, so we'll see mm -hmm. what happens here. Another three minutes to wait it out. But 
for the time being, that Trinity Force now picked up those Mythics you were just talking about completed. In a couple of seconds, we were talking here. Uniboy with the Everfrost 2. Four versus none for the time being. And J-Team know they're strong. Just mm -hmm. kind of moving this game into a, a more successful point. Like, what more could you want right now as DCG play catch-up? Yeah, and we're not going to see those... Uh extra mythics come in for dcg at the moment because of the fact that they are going for the upgraded boots choices right so uh, the only one with the mythic is going to be Cascada, and he's gone for the gale force in this instance knowing that uh he needs a way to get out of the cataclysm once that uh jarvan alt gets tossed onto him if he doesn't have gale force he is just stuck unless he burns that flash so He's trying to give him extra outs at the moment, and he will also cash in on that call. Even even with champions like Hecarim, Galio as well, uh, getting outside the range, excuse me, uh, getting outside the range of Arya, I was trying to say. Uh, it's Zeri, the Alistar. Um, same team, but listen to what I'm saying. The core of it is, it's going to have multiple uses, but you're right. It's going to be hard to get out of any of those abilities. Because once that's down, Flash as well, uh, Chris Carter's still going to dodge quite a lot. So we'll see how this Jinx goes in the fights, especially with a, a minute 30 tilt the dragon spawns. Enzo waiting off to the wing, hoping that Chris Carter walks in, but a nice little control ward spots him out, and Chris Carter will be able to safely push out with Hana at his wing. We are just lolling about until this objective, and note as well that it could be either of the objectives traded off, because Herald will be spawning around the same time. Again, for your J team, I mean, ideally, you'd get, you'd take a look at both of them because of uh, how much pressure you do have on the map, right? Again, uh, these lanes can just shove up whenever they want. So they should be able to get uh, lane priority in pretty much all of them. And then you're going. You're going to have a bit of a stronger team fight at the moment. Although Mythics are being matched, and Lil V getting his backstop could be critical. Um, as he will be just there for the dragon, but yep. DCG not looking to take advantage of that timing. Yeah, more more about the setup, I guess. Mid gets pushed out. DCG clearing vision towards top side. And Enzo's getting deep bot. So as Chris Carter pushes out the bottom side wave, JT moving up. Enzo's warding by himself. Oh. Nesty with the slow, but DCG not committing oh, Woody where top. Woody is. Everfrost comes through, but the charm does not. Spirit Rush out. Enzo has to ult the support, Ooh. making a crucial mistake. D warding by himself, and DCG, no one's going to get caught out with the response play. Right, but it's going to be Woody that suffers the consequences as he takes a larger chunk. Still has the Guardian, of course. That's going to provide that little bit of shield, and now Leaky's on flash, the chase. Flash for flash. Leaky pulls out the pressure play. Dragon now started. Kongyo won't have that, but the flag and drag and Cataclysm no are available. But Driver's Angle is big, and I'm glad to put that out. Nightstar, Leaky's Megana with the ulti as well is going to be down. So DCG playing with the numbers. Oh, and They're all in. Enzo forced the flash, the hostile takeover on the backside though, won't matter a deal because Drive is here doing the rest. Hana can't get the reset with the bailout, and DCG are bailed out themselves. It's J-Team with the big dragon play, the big team fight win, and the gold continuing to skyrocket in their favor. And J-Team, I mean, they just find such a brilliant uh, team fight execution on that play coming in from Enzo. He comes over with the flash, finds a multi-man knockup, and with that, it's just all DCG really just all over the place right after the engage comes through. We're going to see Enzo come over with the flash, and he's going to find Leaky and Priscata with that. And like, Priscata has a great flash in that instance, but I mean, it, the job was pretty much already done. Uh, yep. Forcing out that flash right there, and after the Mega Nar goes down, along with the Nar ultimate, you just have no right to stick around for that fight. And I mean, after that, like, we can see how fickle DCG's comp can be. Uh, how alt-reliant, how important the setup is around these fights. And you're right, when one tool's down, the DCG just looks so hard, and J-Team collapsed. They 
corrupt the minds of DCG and we've got a, a pretty big goal gap now brewing. The second Herald going down as well. You talked about J-Team being able to look at both objectives where they're in pocket for now. We have an Infernal Soul spawning this game. Mm. And this turret's about to go down up in top side. It's all coming up, J-Team, in this game of today. Yeah, it's... A I mean... Oh my god. god. Kongyo wants to go in. Why wouldn't you? I mean, Driver just does so much damage with two items. Yeah, and, and now here's the issue. Even uh, the Rift is playing against you, right? Because with Infernal Soul, if it opens up the map a little bit more, that means it's even harder to find that Meganar ult onto multiple members into a stun, right? You can still find it on multiple members, but getting the stun off is a whole nother issue. They'll be able to crack this tier one in that mid lane, and now all of a sudden, J-Team gaining a lot of momentum here, almost to a 4K gold lead. In the battle for second, J-Team coming out strong. We're 18 minutes into the game, moving into a very strong mid game for them where we're getting those two items too. But little V's almost towards the Titanic Hydra. We've almost got two items on a Zeri that's going to be clearing waves like no tomorrow. Driver, he'll have upgraded boots and then head on to his third item as well. I love that Hana thinking that there's more in the brush, but uh, he will he'll won't find anyone. And, and this has kind of been a game where J-Team have flexed through the laning phase itself. Uh, we, we've seen Driver just do so well, and Kongyue's mm -hmm. level 2 gank has meant so much for JT. Yeah, Kongyue ganking up then at topside very early on, and uh, Leaky expending the flash uh, for that gank and still dying. Large repercussions afterwards. And now, like, J-Team are in a really great spot for DCG. It's not quite over, because when you have these Wombo comp, uh, comps, you can always just find that one perfect fight where everything lines up. But whenever you have a Galio in the mid lane, th there's always that clock. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, Finesse has done too much here with the hero's entrance. And to be fair as well, like we haven't seen that Wombo come through with the Nar ultimate. It has been one after the other. You know, Woody's ultimate as well. The Renata's ulti hasn't come through in succession with everything else. And kind of makes you wonder here for DCG is they've drafted together a comp that needs to line up. And it's not lining up. So we've got 55 seconds till the next dragon. We'll see if they fight over that because at this point, look at how strong J-Team are. Two items now complete in front of this neutral. The only second item for DCG that's completed is Chris Carter's. And that's going to build his range, but... Not going to be able to deal with the burst that Uniboy oh, has with the Void Star. Okay, Kongyo walking in, but is he dead? The answer, no for now. But he's in front of Dragon, and it is the jungler. And so just gets baited in with a Blast Cone, and luckily he'll get out. Yeah, it does take a big chunk, so uh, he'll need to find something to heal off of. Otherwise, it's going to be starting out... Oh, well, actually, he does have red buff, so he will get some sustain yep. coming out. Uh, but... DCG, they need to find this fight. Uniboy out on the flank. They need to find someone to mark him. And Chris Kata, he's already chunked out. But Nesty's there waiting for him. Shield is rampant. Spirit rush immediately backwards. Oh, good top! To Uniboy. And down he goes. But harder into the back line. The play knock Raiders. Look at Kongyue's setup. The hero's entrance up to the back. But Little V is still alive. firing and drive a kite back. It doesn't matter. DCG right now need this Jinx with a mana bar, but she's run on out. And Lil V is skirting around. Flash forward. Another one bites the dust. And Lil V versus Chris Carter. I know the hero. It's J Team in the battle for second. And it's the electric AD carry that comes out on top. Lil V just taking over that fight after a fantastic setup coming in from Konya to lock down three members of DCG after that initial pick coming in from uh, from Nesty. It started out well, right? Because they were able to pick off Uniboy before the fight starts, essentially. But Hana, a very baffling move, just dives straight into the back yeah. line. And the again, like... This was not a this was not a Renata angle. This was not a Renata angle as the ult just completely whiffs and J Team 
they just have uh, more health bars to play around with. And unfortunately for DCG, their only win condition has no mana. Priscata pretty much out of mana in this instance and just unable to get that next reset to get the proc of presence of mind to try and snowball the rest of that fight. That's why you put little V on Zeri. I mean, this guy has been a focus. Like, I remember talking to Clement about the strengths of this team, and it was towards the start of the split, where Kong Yue and Uniboy, it wasn't their greatest form. It was about Lil V and, and how this team played, but now they've got so many different dimensions. Driver has come into a league of his own. Kong Yue has returned to, I'd even say mad form at this point. Uh, Kong Yue is one of my favorite junglers from the LMS, and I'm glad that we're seeing him in, in top tier caliber especially in this game as good charm comes through looks like we want to fight again as j team are pushing their advantage uh nightstar it's an ak gold lead they got the last dragon j team uh -huh. right now look at the side lane pressure that they've controlled all game long yes. Boy and driver have always been split pushing this game and that's why we're up to inhibitor turrets in top and bottom yeah and the waves are crashing in on the sides and i mean look at this little v build right he knows he's 5-0 and 4. He has a very large gold bounty. He just expended his cleanse. So, I mean, it is coming up, but if a fight were to break out, he now has a QSS. So, there is a lot of safety. He understands that going this defensive build, while might not work out on even footing, they're so far ahead that it's about protecting the lead rather than trying to win a team fight. And look at how many damage sources they have as well. Driver and Uniboy are still going to be fleshing it out. So, so many different angles to play through. And Lil V just looking to survive while we have a two and a half item Ari. Despite getting caught in the last play, is still a threat. A driver as well. His angles are great. And even J Team here fighting from the back. Hana Ozzy's in on the driver. But it might not matter because again, Little V in the backside untouched. J Team. Four versus five, but you have to deal with they Little sides. B. Getting them down for now. J-Team running for the hills. They're split up, and now it definitely matters. DCG have picked them apart, and J-Team with an innovative play, but just pad execution coming through. DCG will find big picks, and J-Team for now are halted in their aggression. Man, J-Team were creative in the wrong way. Yep. Uh, on that engage angle. Now it's going to be Baron started up. We'll see if they can stop it. Well, the problem is still Lil V. Firing away. They're running oh. into him. Uniboy gets the kill. DCG might have to pull off this. I'm not sure. In without a oh, jungler. They're all dead. Look they're at this dead. behind the Baron pit. Lil V firing through, but Leaky's ulti brings it right back. He'll get the bailout for now. His driver jumps on in. Never mind. In with Baron going down. So many members dying. Leaky does get bailed out, but his time is at an end. Jade team burn themselves, but the Baron remains only on Woody. It is certainly debatable as far as if that was a good play for the side of DCG, but I think they needed to force that Baron play. And they still get everything they came for. They get the objective bounty, they get themselves a Baron buff still alive, and it's a lot of gold back into their hands. Like They also got the shutdown onto Lil V, so it's a lot of gold back into them, which helps even out the playing field, but it doesn't change the fact that uh, this, this was ugly. Uh, but a great bailout, honestly, is the only saving grace here. Uh, from this Renata. I, I think that's the only positive Renata play we've seen. Yeah, it helps Leaky get a, a 1k gold shutdown as well for what it's worth, but you're right, that's the only time this game we've seen Woody come into clutch, so nice here from DCG. They do have one Baron, and grouping up with the rest of the team, it'll help push down the mid lane, but look at top, look at bot, the wave's building up. J Team right now grouping themselves with Dragon available. They have side lane priority, and they have River for theirs. But now. A lot of control in this bottom half of the map for the side of J team. Oh. And I mean, DCG, they, they probably just have to let this one go. They just, oh, 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 oh no. Okay, he wants to steal. He definitely wants to steal the off in the back okay. line, but Lil V not going to be hit. Leaky goes into Meganar, but look at him run forward. Driver as well with the burst damage. Kiting front to back. Lil V aggressing forward. 
They force him off the dragon. They move to Soul Point. J Team 7,000 gold ahead. DCG trying to get into these fights, Night Star, but it looks so difficult to manage. Yeah, and it's it's really hard for them to play out these fights because of uh, Leaky is really the only main tank. And uh, yeah, look at Lilby. Look at Lilby oh, step man. up. There goes the QSS. But okay, that's once one cool again, down at least. At least. But everyone's going to be down for a little bit. J-Team is still going to aggress forward against the Baron of Woody. They cannot. Yeah, that, it is the saving grace that they were able to save a Baron buff. And even if it's on the support, although, you know, the support doesn't exactly uh, eat poke very well. And because it is the Shirelias and not the Moonstone, uh, they're not going to have a lot of staying power when it comes to these siege situations. Well, as he resets, Woody's going to run out of the Baron, though, in about one second. So, down it goes. And for DCG, this turret getting aggressed on. It comes down to a Mega Nar performance, but Leaky is out of range of J-Team. They buy that space once again. And it will just come down to the wave clear. So, now we wait two and a half minutes until the Baron just about Dragon Soul for J-Team with an Infernal for a Jace for an Ari. Uh, just one that you got to be cheering about in three and a half minutes, too. Everything under J-Team's control, and... DCG trying to force a pick. There's actually a ghost being burnt by Hana. Driver's by himself. Enzo can't help this out. He cancels his back, but Driver doing a lot of damage. There's the onslaught of shadows from Hana. Leaky jumps in, though, and half HP he gets to. No one can save him. DCG with the pick, and it's a shutdown of that. Very nice shutdown there on to Driver, really uh, slowing down that absolute menace he's been. However, at the same time, for the side of J team, not too concerned about that pick because DCG they can't get anything off of that. There's no dragon, no Baron yep. up available, so a driver will still be respawned in time for those objectives, and it's really just a nice little sack of gold for the side of DCG at the moment. But yeah, it's a it's a tough game to play because all your gold is into this Nar, and he. Unless if he gets a god tier ult, which again, a lot harder on Infernal Rift because there's a lot more space to play around. It also makes it more difficult for Galio to yep. land a multi-mana ultimate. Uh, so everything is stacked against DCG. It is. And and that's why we've been talking a lot about J Team's success in this game. Although it has been somewhat back and forth despite the gold lead. Uh, J Team have been uh -oh. in control for the majority. Little pick here, but Nice flag from Kongyue. Means a DCG is spotted out. Have to back away. It's a minute in front of the Baron. And there's enough spacing here between the two objectives that JT can force this one first, look for DCG, and then move to Seoul if they choose. Yeah, and for DCG, yes, all the gold is onto the Nar, and we have to pay attention to that Mega Nar ultimate. But... Really, all eyes are on Crescata on this Jinx to carry the fight. He needs that first reset. He has the items to try and do it, right? He's hit that triple crit mark. Doesn't quite have the IE yet, so he's not that uh, strong, know. but very powerful. Okay. Wants a flank here. Kongue is knocked back into Leaky. He's about to go Megana, but Hana was really trying for an angle on Lil V on Driver. Are not going to be obtained. J Team still having priority over this Baron. 10 seconds till it spawns, and look at the vision control. Look at Top Wave once again. Night Star, everything in their favor to catch DCG by surprise. Yeah, it's just full vision uh, controlled by the side of J Team at the moment with Dragon coming up, with Baron already up. It's, it's all about this next Dragon, but at the same time, J Team could try and force something around the Baron right before and see if DCG are looking to flip before the more important objective. I hope so, because that would be fun. We've had a lot of flips here today in a 24 kill game. That's what I expect is Kong here almost caught out, but the TP saving the life here. Uniboy has come on in and the charms a shallow bit short. A leaky moving forward, no Mega Naba. J Team. Right now, want to contest here for the sole point. Instead of going for that Baron, everyone's here for the party. Dragon now spawning. 
keep track of these flanks as Enzo, he is going the long way around. He is, but he's spotted out. Hana doing the same thing on the back of the pit. Not only would this be a seal from the Soul, it would be an objective bounty for DCG. Uniboy in a great angle as Driver misses the shock blast combination, but Leaky's Mega Narba. That's what I'm worried about. And Dragon hasn't reset here until about now, this but a it's a good open. window for DCG. There. J Team needs to steal, and he gets it. Kongue secures as Hana goes down as well. Now to five versus four. Leaky with a one man ulti. The hero's entrance hits no one. DCG get nothing as the bailout will only buy time for Chris Carter. But it's J Team's story here today in their battle for second. J Team, they just completely own that fight. DCG, they just have no steam left in their composition. They don't have any protection for this Jinx, and it's all about the dive. And what do you know? There's just no damage in the dive. Hana, he is going full tank, and so is that Nar. So now with Nar getting and his back stalled out, that's just going to be the end. Yeah, Lil V's here, make it a bit quicker. J Team versus DDG. No longer will this be a tie. It's J Team who move up to second in the penultimate day of the PCS Spring. And J Team put themselves in prime position to secure the second seed. DCG holding Kongu. on to the second seed the entire time. And Konya knows how important this game was. Yep. Uh, and man. What a... It's definitely been a very stark contrast for DCG. They had a, such a strong opening to the split. And these last couple of weeks, really, really looking flat. Yeah, it is. And look, for DCG, you know, now 12 and 5, they can be caught up to as well. Beyond Gaming, CDBC, Flying Oyster. Yep. Uh, they're in range to sneak one out from DCG, and you're right, like DCG, the split started so nicely. Uh, they've taken a couple of influential losses here. But against J-Team, that was a really hard ask when mm -hmm. that early game from Kongue, I think, alone deserves MVP. Because we look here again, Kongue was the king of thieves in this game. Yeah, and it looked like it was such a great timing to try and fight, right? Because you have Meganar about to come up here. Uh, you also have them zoned off, but again, like, the ultimates just didn't uh, didn't synergize well at all. And yep. when you're forced to use the hostile takeover in a, an attempt to try and follow up on an engage, th then, like, how are you supposed to protect this Jinx? Your comp, your comp only has Jinx for the damage, and you're sure. all just leaving her behind. I, I think as well, like when we, we talked a lot about the Renata that goes with it, uh, uh, globally, Renata and Jinx, you know, some of the strongest 2v2 bottom lanes, especially with the Renata comps. But this time around, the Renata didn't have value. We never saw, as you said, everything piled together, everything go nicely. The Renata looked pretty useless here for Woody. And it was a shame because we could see what DCG wanted to do. But from early on, you know, the Nar falling behind. Uniboy in a great position in his lane. Lil V and Enzo didn't really lose anything in their 2v2. <laughs> J-Team's lanes were just steadily going along, and Kongue was getting such an advantage. Uh, props to this jungler, that level 2 gank, ingenious. And I think, again, we're seeing the strengths of Kongue towards the later end of this split. Yeah, Kongue are really starting to show up. Now that he doesn't have to go onto these hard carry champions, like the Gwen, like the Diana, uh, where he has to sort of play a 1v9 play style. Now, yep. it feels like he's found his comfort zone. He trusts the players, the rest of the players in his team that they can also carry, whereas it felt like before is like, I have to do the job myself, otherwise it's just doomed. So oh, yeah. uh, here we get to see the damage charts like, Driver, what a, what a man. Yeah, not a surprise, right? Early landing phase had a great time, and Driver was one of the first to pick up that Mythic. And as he did, he just kept poking back one. It was him and Uniboy. Such a threat from these angles. And is it a surprise that the King of Thieves in this game picks up MVP? I don't think so. Kong Yue from level two onwards was in charge of the jungle matchup. Kong Yue was just absolutely uh, king in the jungle yep. looking like Tarzan
Well, look, he's looking better than Tarzan because Tarzan's not looking too <laughs> great towards the end of this split. So, from they're looking like experience. DCG. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> I, I think. Look, I think Kongyue again. There was a time where this guy was the representative for the LMS slash PCS. Uh, Kongyue still has that experience behind him. He's got a mid laner. He's very familiar with. It's mm -hmm. coming up really nicely, and J Team towards the later end of the split now on a full win streak. Like this team has been a big surprise to me. I, I'm so happy that we have PSG and J Team neck and neck for first yeah. and second at the moment. It, it, it feels just it's like. Yeah, when, and especially when you're talking about the big ticket names left in the PCS, those two are the premier names. So it's yep. great to see that uh, these really treasured names are rising all the way to the top and it makes for great storylines and even also just brand recognition when we move on to possibly seeing them on the international stage. Well, that's right. I mean, especially towards the end of spring, only one spot for MSI, but... but... It's going to be a dangerous spot with the competition here in the PCS, but ladies and gentlemen, two more games to go. We get Sem9 and CFO right after this break to see if CFO can move up to a very similar angle.